So here we continue our simple introduction to YAC by building a calculator for infix ex arithmetic expressions. So we can see our calculator, the grammar that we're going to use for parsing these expressions here is a very simple, unambiguous grammar that's got seven productions. And we've, the non-terminals are S, E, T, and F. And the terminals are tokens, are num, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, a minus sign, an asterisk, a plus, and dollar sign representing the, the end of file. So over here in my editor, I, you can see the yak syntax for this grammar. So you can see I've, I've, I'm using colons and pipes for the arrows. I, you can see single te character tokens. I'm just gonna represent those terminals as characters between single quotes. Um, you can see num had to be declared up here in the preamble, right? The interesting part of the grammar is between these double percent signs. All right, so let's continue from this point. Now, I'm actually going to add a couple of productions to make our calculator a, more, a little more useful. For one, I'm going to go ahead and add in, have, have our calculator do subtraction as well as addition. And I'm also going to add in division as well. So we'll add, the, we'll add a couple of productions and make this a little more useful. All right, so now at this point, we actually want our parser to actually do something. In this case, the side effect is to actually evaluate the expression. So what I need to do is I'm going to, I'm going to have an action fire for when there's a production, a reduction based on a, any individual production happens. I'm going to have an action associated with that production. So the first thing I need to do for all the symbols in my grammar, I need to associate an attribute. And the syntax for this is going gonna, is gonna to look like this. Up in the preamble, I'm going to say union. And between curly braces, I, I'm going to have the field call, say, call it float f. So this is going to represent the data type for the attributes that are associated with the symbols in my grammar. Now, we use a union because we, we know, depending on what the symbol is, we may have a completely different type of attribute. So in this case, we're only going to have a single type, and that's a float. So later on, we'll have multiple fields in there. But for this simple example, I'm just going to have a single float with a field name F. And so I'm going to so here, before I declare my token, I'm going to say, hey, look, our, we're going to have the field F from our union is going to be associated with num. So we'll show how that actually happens in the lexical analyzer we'll build. Right now, so that's now the the others. The, tokens, the plus, the minus, we, they don't really have an, an attribute associated with those. But for the non-terminals, the way we specify the attributes associated with those, we use the type directive. And so for an E, we're all, for, for an E, we're going to have the F field associated with, with that particular terminal symbols, or non-terminal symbols. So I have E, T, and F. So there's my, my type so attribute type associated with those. So let's so let's so what I want to do now is have actions associated with my productions. So I'm going to begin with this production. E goes to E plus T. So what I'm going to do here over on the right is I'm going to write in between curly braces, I'm going to write an action. So this is actually some C code, but we're going to have some sort of funny symbols embedded in, in the code here. So in this particular case, I'm going to say dollar sign, dollar sign equals dollar sign one plus dollar sign three. All right, so this is actual piece of C code, but these dollar signs are gonna be replaced with something. So first of all, what's the dollar sign one and the dollar sign three? Well, if you look at this production, there are three symbols on the right-hand side of the, this production, an E, a plus, and a T. And if you number them from left to right, the E being the first, the plus being the second, and the T being the right, we, the, we, the way we reference the attributes associated with those with dollar sign one and dollar sign three. So dollar sign one is the attribute associated with E, and dollar sign three is the attribute associated with T. Right? So in this case, which are just going to be floats F, right? So I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add those two together. I'm going to do a floating point add, take those two values. So whenever we do a reduction, I'm simply going to add the value associated with the E and add the value associated with the, 
with the T, I'm going to add them together, and then the dollar sign dollar sign represents the attribute associated with the left hand side of the production, which is the E clear over on the left. So I'm going to replace the, the E plus T, the attribute, I'm going to add them together and, the, and do, and when the reduction fires, we're now going to do the addition associated with that, right? So similarly, on the, on the, next, on the next one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing, except at this time, I'm going to subtract the two values. So whenever that production is fired, when we do a reduction, where I'm going to replace the E minus T with the actual subtracted values of their attributes and replace the, the associated value with that, right? So remember, we're doing things from a bottom-up fashion. So at this point, I assume I've already seen the E, the minus, and the T, so I have those values. I'm going, so I'm going to do the reduction, I'm going to do the subtraction, and, and, do, and replace the value that's just put back on the stack, pushed back onto the stack with the difference of the two values. So this one's actually quite simpler. Matter of fact, I don't need to write this because if you don't give an action, this is sort of the default action. In this case, which just I'm simply just taking the, the value associated with the t, the, the one value on the right hand side, and replacing it with the e. Now I'm going to go ahead and write it just to be explicit. So here we're going to have a very similar thing, except I'm going to do I'm going to do multiplication. Here we'll do a division, um, and again here I'm just I'm I'm just going to do dollar sign dollar sign equals dollar sign one. Be explicit. Now this one's going to. I'm just going to take the expression inside the parentheses, which is going to be dollar sign two because the e is the second thing on the right hand side of the production. This is going to look exactly the same, um, except I'm going to do actually I'm going, to, I'm going to do a unary minus, and then finally the value associated with num is is going to is dollar sign one right. All right, so there's just some actions. Now, finally, when we do the final, final reduction, when we reduce back to the start symbol, I'm, then I'm just going to print the result. So I'm going to print the result up here, and I'm going to print the value associated with, with that. All right, so there are my actions. So now, obviously, I need to put some code up here into the header file. So I'm going to put between this percent sign curly braces, I'm going to put some C code that'll get prepended to the output file. In this particular case, I'm going to put, I'm going to need standard io.h header file, and I'll need the standard lib header file at this point. And I'm going to specify that our lexical analyzer is going to be somewhere else. It's going to be called yylex. We're going to go write that in a minute. Until then, it's defined there, and we're going to also. So that's going to. And we're also. So down at the bottom, I'm going to write our parser. Kind of, the stuff below the last double percent side gets, gets appended to the output file. So I'm going to have to have. I'm going to define a. A function to call when there's an error, which is called yy error. And. So yy error. What I'm simply going to start with is I'm just going to print the message to standard error. And for now, I'm just going to go ahead and exit with an exit code of 1. So that's kind of the kind of way I'm going to handle that. And then my main, all my main is going to do, my main is going to be very simple. I'm going to call yy parse. So yylex is going to be the lexical analyzer associated with uh, our lex generator. We'll look at it in a minute. It's going to ret it always returns the next token, which is encoded as an integer. The parser is going to be called yyparse. Whenever there's a, a lexical error, syntax error, or whatever kind of error, we're going to call yyerror, which you can see is going to be fatal. And then yyparse, and then we'll simply return 0 at that point. So there's there's effectively our our initial parser at this point. So it'll parse a single expression, evaluate it, write it out, and quit. So so that's kind of the sum. So let's go actually work on the lexical analyzer piece, right? So 
so I'm going to call it calc.l. That's sort of the convention for, for Lex files to have a .l extension. So at this point, let's see. So in Lex, I'm going to put my my regular expressions, just like yak, the, the grammar goes between two double percent signs, the regular expressions go between two double percent signs. So the, the first thing I want to recognize my scanner, I have a regular exp expression for floating point numbers, which would begin with one or more digits. And then optionally, we could have a, a decimal point followed by one or more digits. And so there's, so this, so in between parentheses, I have a question mark. So that means optionally I could have a decimal point in one or more digits. Then I, I potentially could have an exponent part, which has, we could be in with a lowercase e or an uppercase e, followed by um, a string of one or more digits. And so that's optional as well. And that's my first regular expression. The only, um, I'm going to recognize, let's see, the other tokens I'm going to recognize are minus, a plus, a left and right parentheses, and asterisk, and a slash, and the only other thing is, is I'm going to handle new lines sort of separately at this point. So actually, we'll just consider um, all the white space characters for now. So we'll have a space, a tab, a form feed, a vertical, a vertical tab, and a new line. Okay. So the action, when we recognize a floating point number, what I'm going to do is, so if you remember in our YAC file that our attribute is going to, is going to have a field called F. So I'm going, and the, the, the global variable that holds the attribute is called yylval. So I'm going to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the f field, which is the the, the f value associated with the field here. It's going to be a float, and I'm going to take. I'm going to convert the yy text. So yy text actually contains the current lexeme that matched the regular expression. I'm going to take that and convert it to the floating point number, and then I'm going to return num. All right. For, for these values, for each of these are single character tokens, I'm simply going to return yy text zero. And then for white space, I'm simply going to do nothing. So I'm just going to, I'll just put a semicolon, which is kind of the null, the null statement at this point. And so that's going to be my lexical analyzer at this point. So that and so the next thing I need to do is I need to describe well how does how does Lex know about the symbol num, and so how do how do how do the lexer and the parser communicate with each other? So I'll do that in in the next video.